Today, I show you how to save your money. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I go over what parts or mods you shouldn't buy. These are a big waste of money and hopefully I can help you save that cash to buy something worthwhile. So let's get right into the list. Performance spark plugs. I see it all the time on the forums. Will these, insert brand here, spark plugs increase my horsepower? And of course you're going to have the people saying, yes, I put them in my engine and I can feel the difference. Well yes, you will feel a difference if your current plugs are worn out and in need of replacement. All the spark plug is going to do is restore your engine back to its peak performance. You won't get a horsepower increase. Don't buy into the super duper iridium multi-electrode high performance spark plug bullshit. They're going to do nothing for you. Just because they added three more ground electrodes doesn't increase your spark or horsepower. They do nothing. Short RAM intakes, also known as hot air intakes, and for a good reason. They sit in your hot engine bay and suck up hot air. If you don't know, heat soak is a bad thing. You're not going to feel a difference with a short RAM intake, or even a cold air intake for that matter. If your OEM air intake is plumbed into the fender, the bumper, the grill, leave it be or buy a cold air. A short RAM intake is going to kill your performance. Hot air equals bad air. I don't care what the manufacturer says, you're not going to get 15 horsepower by installing their short RAM intake. Intake turbo fans. You know, those spinny fan looking things you find on eBay. The ones that claim up to 10 horsepower and up to 50 mile per gallon increase. Yeah, I'd hate to break it to you, but they don't work. First of all, I would never install something directly in line with my intake that could break apart and cause my engine to fail. Would you? I mean, look at these reviews. These people are claiming that you get up to 60% more airflow. 60% more airflow. Just by installing one of these little spinny boys in your air intake system. What I imagine would happen is they would decrease your airflow by 60%, not increase it. Performance chips. Ah, yes, the infamous eBay performance chip. The ones that add up to 50 horsepower at the wheels nonetheless please explain to me how something like this can do anything to your car all you do is plug it into the obd2 port and that's it shit if it was that easy why would people buy holly efi systems or even go to a tuner why would dynos exist oh and the best part they offer up to a stage 3 chip let that sink in these people are charging 99 dollars and up for an obd port cover because that's all this thing is caliper covers out of everything on this list, I hate these the most. Not only do they look really stupid, but they're a pain right in the ass when you have to change your brakes. I work on cars all day long, and when cars come in with these things on them, you could change the oil and not even go anywhere near them. No matter what you do, they make noise on the way out the door. Then you have to pull the car back in just so you can adjust them so they stop making noise. And to top it off, they don't even look like a big caliper. Fake badging. This one is annoying as well. There seems to be a trend with putting the top model of your car's badges on. Why? I have no idea. In the Mustang world, people like to put Cobra badges on everything. I bought a new shell a couple months ago and it has Cobra badges on the fenders, but the car is a GT. We would call this a Fobra. I see a lot of BMW people doing this as well. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make your car that model. They usually have major differences between the models and you can usually spot a fake right away. Kind of like Honda guys putting red Honda badges on. People seem to think they came that way in Japan, but only the Type R has them. Please stop doing this. Big Wings. This is a tough one. I'm a fan of them, but I'm not at the same time. They do offer a performance increase, but they're only designed to make the rear of the car more stable at high speeds. Your front wheel drive car does not need this or benefit from it. Even drift cars don't benefit from this, which is where this is most common nowadays. This would be more of a style thing for the most part. Look at it like this. If NASCARs don't use them, why should you? They see speeds well over 200 miles per hour. Most of these people won't even see 150. Racing fuel. If you don't know how octane ratings work, let me explain really quick. The higher the octane number, the more compression the fuel can withstand before detonating. In more simple terms, fuels with a higher octane rating are used in high performance gasoline engines that require higher compression ratios. This is also a big one on the forums. Your engine is designed to run on a certain fuel. If your engine is designed to run on 87, putting 93 in it won't give you more horsepower. You're just wasting money at that point. 
It won't make your engine perform better, get better gas mileage, or run cleaner. The only reasons you should switch to a higher octane rating is if your engine starts detonating or if you get it tuned for that specific higher octane. Your best bet is to listen to what the manufacturer recommends. Harness bars. I would highly, highly, highly not recommend you use a harness bar to mount your racing harnesses. Your factory seatbelt serves a purpose other than keeping you in the seat in the event of a crash. It is the three-point harness. It allows you to move and bend in the event of a rollover. If you are strapped in and all you have is a harness bar, you run the risk of getting yourself killed. Racing harnesses are designed to keep you in the seat and not move. You are literally strapped into your seat, so if you roll over and don't have a roll cage to stop the roof from crushing in, you're going to get seriously injured or possibly killed. Stick to your factory seat belt. It's safer if you don't have a roll cage. Four point harnesses. Last on the list is also a safety issue. Like I said in the last part, harnesses are meant to keep you in your seat. If you have a roll cage, most event tech inspections will require you to have at least a five point racing harness. You have two shoulder belts, two lap belts, and a crotch belt. The crotch belt is the big factor here. With a four-point harness, you're missing the crotch belt. This belt is there to protect you from going out the bottom of the harness if you were to crash, also known as submarining. This can kill you. In physics, they say an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Your dashboard, your pedals, your steering column, and everything in that area is your unbalanced force. Again, you would be safer with the factory belt. That's it for today's video. Hopefully I can help you save your money and do it right the first time. Now take that newfound money and go buy something useful. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.